Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 2019 Toronto Regional Championship of the Pokemon Trading Card Game. We are out of the breakfast action and back into the main action of the actual tournament. I am one of your esteemed hosts, John Kettler, and to my right is the one, the only... Kirk Dupesnacks Dubay. Glad to be back. Round 12 action. Two great players, Jimmy Pendarvis, John Ang. Uh, definitely always known for being at the top of the results uh, yeah. at the end of a tournament. So. Oh, yeah, and they're pretty high up there right now, too, at Table 5, and we've got a pretty exciting match going on. But first, let's go ahead and look at just how the field's unfolding right now. What have you seen? Uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's the surprise to no one based on, uh, you know, the day two decks that we were looking at this morning that Trevenant uh, has really, uh, the cream of the crop has risen to the, to the top, and this was a Trevenant tournament. We were talking about it yesterday. The field seemed to set itself up that way. And, of course, you know, the top three tables, all six players, Trev Mears. That's right. And at this point, while there is still an opportunity for non-Trevenant decks to really make a difference and possibly exploit the fact that it's so popular, right now it's without a doubt the favored deck to win this tournament. I mean, there's really no denying that when you have almost a third of the top 32 players with Trevenant. Now, I remember speaking with at least a couple of them throughout the tournament, including that one post-match interview, and it seems like they were pretty concerned about Pikachu, Zekrom, GX as a deck, but we have not seen that at all in the top tables, except for one player, and that was, I believe, Colin, who had yeah, made it, Colin, squeaked in at 32nd. Yeah, Colin the Hurricane Norman squeaked in at 32nd as the only peak around player. The hate was strong. Uh, people really respected the hype it was getting it. Um, and that's what kind of made, uh, as you've mentioned multiple times, the game within the game. Um, so the folks that said, okay, I'll let other people deal with hating out Pikachu, Zekrom, and Zorark decks, and I'm just going to play Trevenant and then feast on those counter decks. And that's exactly yeah. what's happened. And that's the crazy thing is that in a vacuum, maybe Pikachu, Zekrom is the best deck. In a vacuum, though, but you get these situations where because of hype, because of people talking, the metagame almost accelerates to the point where it actually moves too fast at that point. So Exactly, exactly. As we've mentioned, Trev rising to the top. Um, get a quick confirmation on the headsets. They have their headsets on, so let's right, talk great. for a second. We're okay. just now getting deck lists to John, John Ang will be on the right side, right hand side of your screen playing Hitmonchan, hit and run, uh, pivoting into Wobbuffets to shut down uh, Jimmy's abilities. Yep, an age old strategy against an age old deck with Night March. We've been talking about it all weekend, even if it hasn't been on as much with Jimmy Pendarvis. We've seen his exact list before on stream already. One of the really interesting inclusions that he has here are two copies of Electro Power, an item card letting you to add 30 damage to the attacks of your Lightning-type Pokemon. So Joltik's going to be dealing a little bit bigger damage, but I'm not sure how relevant that is against a squishy Pokemon like Hitmonchan. Certainly not relevant for this matchup, I don't believe. Uh, th the selection of Night March is exactly what I was talking about focusing on in on expected metagame and then trying to feast on that. Those Electro Powers he helping you get over the finish line for those one-hit knockouts on the big GX Pokemon like Pikachu, Zekrom, maybe Waylord, you know, uh, Carplord, GX, you know, the tag team. Your favorite. With 300 HP, exactly. So uh, Electro Powers make a lot of sense when you consider what people were expecting outside of the Trevenant bubble. Right. Although it seems to be maintaining its presence and has ways to maybe try to get around Trevenant, but it's still a bad matchup. Now, granted, the Wally -E ban is one of those cards that was taken away this season, made a big difference, but it's still a close, well, not a close, it's a it's a bad matchup. Let's not mince words here. Absolutely. We're jumping down to the action, uh, trying to base on posturing, see who's going first. I believe it is Jimmy that is on the button. Yes, trainer's mail, four cards coming. Let's see what Jimmy Pendarvis finds. Choice band. Not going to get a lot of mileage in this matchup, John. No, but there's at least a bit of indirect mileage in the form of deck then. So in that situation, you try to get rid of useless cards. You're probably not going to, that are probably not going to make much of a difference for you. Get them into play or get them discarded. And we might even see that at some point with the Electro Power, just playing the Electro Power, even if it doesn't really benefit Jimmy with much of a damage boost, just to get it out of play. Absolutely. Trainer's Mail coming down again, another four cards. Jimmy's going to take a look and select himself a trainer card if he has one in there. N is the selection. John, looking back and forth at these uh, one hit, or excuse me, single prize kind of OHKO type decks, especially in this matchup because all their Pokemon are so squishy. Um, 
Does it is it just going to come down to who takes the first knockout and who can continually stream their knockouts? Not exactly, because we have two very powerful cards in both of these decks. So looking down the list for John Ang's Hitmonchan, I'm seeing here, actually, uh, you know, there's a normal inclusion in these decks, which is a single copy of Focus Sash. I do, don't believe that I see any inclusion of Focus Sash here. So normally what you see, if it is there, is you see a situation where John is able to protect his Hitmonchan from a knockout, but in this case, I yeah, super long story short, I think that it's going to come down to prizes, just exchange and who gets out first. Something that uh, John can use to swing uh, the matchup in his direction is a Shuckle GX and is playing four copies of Prism Energy, so can actually use Wrap GX to oh deal man, 40 damage and right. take a knockout on a Joltik, maybe with a double colorless energy on it. And because of, I believe, it's the pr Protective Shell yep. ability, um, Jimmy's going to have to double attach to a Pokemon to be able to attack into that Shuckle and take those two prizes. That's right, so there are a couple possible gimmick strategies you can do to get around that. Now, Granted, Jimmy runs a copy of Silent Lab, so he has some way to at least address that Shuckle GX. With um, Jimmy uh, playing a down dowsing machine as well, even if that Silent Lab gets bumped, Stretcher is um, Rescue Stretcher comes into play for John to get the Shuckle back out, maybe to prevent uh, Jimmy because he selected Dowsing Machine. We'll have a way to buy that back, that single copy of Silent Lab, and maybe rinse and repeat single attachment big knockout on a GX there. So some very interesting techs in each deck that um, can factor in largely maybe based on what they have prized for this game. Yeah, now going down John Ang's list again, another thing that I do not see a whole lot of is energy hate. I see a an enhanced hammer here, and uh, I'm really struggling. We got a single copy of Cartana GX, which is an effective card with its ability discarding special energy cards itself as well as giving John an additional way with that Prism Energy with Blade GX to get a prize. He just gets to draw a prize card if he wants to use that. So there are more options there. There's a lot of creativity going on in this Hitmonchan list. Jimmy, uh, you know, Night March doing its Night March things, just getting the, the deck thinned out, Parallel City coming down, limiting John's bench might hinder his uh, development a little bit. John leading the charge has a Wobbuffet bench, going to use Nest Ball to grab uh, the namesake of the deck, the main attacker, that Hitmonchan, uh, Hitmon fan, whatever you want to call it. Um, compared to the other Hitmonchan decks we've seen, this one not playing the Hitmon Lee to be able to snipe to the bench. I think I see a copy of Hitmon Lee. Oh, yep, I one. missed it. I missed it. Good eye, John. Appreciate that. Guzma pulling up the Joltik. This is an easy knockout for the, uh, for the Hitmonchan basing that Joltik is weak to fighting. Yeah, and we've got that Cartana GX just hanging out in the hand. John's ready to drop it at a moment's notice, but for now he's like, you know what, I can just go go ahead and do my hit and run and put some pressure on right now and only play that if I really have to. Good knockout there for John. Initiated the prize trade, and now I think it's just going to come down to who misses first. That's right. Now with Wapfet in play, its ability is shutting off the abilities of all non-psychic Pokemon. So Jimmy's options are a little limited here, and that's an exchange for John's abilities to end up being a little less limited in some ways, but he can, in a moment's notice, get that Wobbuffet out of the active possession position and reactivate his abilities by bringing up Hitmonchan. Jimmy going through his deck using teammates, as we know, if your Pokemon was knocked out in the previous turn, you get to search your deck for two cards. Kind of thumbing to the front, uh, Dimension Valley, I saw Battle Compressor, maybe considering Silent Lab, maybe trying to shut off Orangaroo. Um, and I believe the final selection was Battle Compressor Dimension Valley? I think so. And that's another eccentricity about Jimmy's list, is that he only runs the single copy of the Dimension Valley. So we've seen night marches throughout the years running multiple copies, some running four almost as a mainstay. For him, it's just this single copy, and that's been working well for him for the entire tournament. And we've got a scan of that Hitmon Lee up, and we've got that bench special. damage ability. Yep, the special combo. If uh, Hit and Run on Hitmonchan was used in your previous turn, Hitmon Lee for one fighting energy can do 90 anywhere. I believe her 92, uh, your opponent's bench. Right, and so that involves some pretty helpful combos in some situations, especially if a Pokemon's been beaten up by Hitmonchan, just do special combo, and you get a 
possible knockout you wouldn't have otherwise. Absolutely. So uh, easy knockout there for uh, Pumpkaboo. Hitmonchan going to move into the active. Um, and now John's got, got some decisions to make. He's got a nest ball, so he'll be able to get another uh, Pokemon to the bench. And if I'm not mistaken, he's still sitting on that beast energy at some point. Maybe not now. He, I mean, he ideally shouldn't play it until he has an opportunity to really dedicate and commit to a particular Ultra Beast Pokemon. He also runs a copy of that Nihilego with its ability to copy the one of the opponent's attacks. Unfortunately, it's not going to be as relevant here in the Night March matchup because copying Night March when you don't run any Night March Pokemon to discard is probably not going to get you too far. Nest Ball for the Diancie. Um, reason is Pumpkaboo, uh, Jimmy right now, or excuse me, John right now, doing 70 damage on the face. However, that Pumpkaboo is fighting resistant. So going to have to get some more damage modifiers on there to take that OHKO. We are sitting at 70 minus 20, 50. Not quite strong enough just yet. That's right. And when strong energy and Diancie are not enough, you can try to get a muscle band. We've got a wide variety of tools in the expanded format to give us additional damage. We have some like Choice Band, which will increase the damage dealt to GXs, but because Hitmonchan is dealing with a wide variety of decks, not just GX decks, he, John, opts for three copies of Muscle Band, which just increases the damage of a Pokemon by 20 against anything. So he would be hoping for that. It looks like he is playing around with some options to thin out his hand for, I think it looks like a one or two card Guru Instruct. Yeah, so a Kartana GX coming down using Slice yeah, Off. copy, and it's a Float Stone. So he got a tool, but he got the wrong one. That Slice Off uh, ability from Kartana GX knocking off the DCE off Pumpkaboo. Um, <laughs> Guzma up the uh, Pumpkaboo. Oh, we're going to see a Blade GX. And just a Blade GX looking for that GX Are marketer we? flip to yeah. take a prize. <laughs> um, John hates to put himself in that position because benching a GX switches that prize trade around. And even though John took the first knockout and is currently leading in prizes, uh, Jimmy doing Night March things can easily hit the uh, 170 that Kartana GX's HP represents to give himself two prizes and get back in the lead. I don't mind that as a general tactic, though, because... It applies some pressure because it discards that special energy off the pump kaboo, but then it would have would have like emphasis would have forced Jimmy to attach a double colorless energy to the active pump kaboo. So committing another energy, but because of that escape rope, it's a moot point. Yep, escape rope coming in clutch. That's a single copy uh, in Jimmy Pendarvis's deck, allowing him to pivot around without having to use a supporter like a Guzma or having to find necessarily uh, his one copy of Floatstone. So good deck building there, paid off big, gets another DCE down on the Pumpkaboo and uh, has the opportunity to take a knockout here on a Wobbuffet and a full grip as well. Yeah. We've got the committing of that other double colorless energy. For the two lists here, because John doesn't run a whole lot of energy hate, Jimmy actually isn't hurt that much by playing that double colorless on the bench right now because he can commit that energy, so if he gets some sort of hand disruption going against him, he can deal with that. But it he also still has a special charge to get back double colorless energy. So interesting draw off the Instructor 1. I believe I saw the one copy of Enhanced Hammer in John Eng's deck coming up, and that's important because the Shuckle is in hand as well. Shuckle, in the current state, looking at Jimmy's board, isn't quite as good. But if you can knock off an energy, attack, and knock off the other energy with a knockout, Jimmy's sitting with no energy on board, and then Shuckle's value exponentially increases because of that. Oh, yeah, but because he Enhanced Hammered the active, it looks like it's going to be a little bit harder for John to get that combo off, where I'm wondering what, if anything, he's going to really consider here with that VS Seeker. So instead, he just decides to hit for not quite enough because of that resistance. All right, Jimmy's kind of gone on the ones and twos to find a way to either switch into the active or get another DCE. Two DCEs down already, as we know. Trainer's mail. Top four does... Jimmy like find Guzma. Guzma, that's that's a good find. Yeah. 
do a quick little uh, damage count, and you might be able to Guzma up and uh, take out the only attacker. Definitely has the option on Hitmonchan, and also, depending on how many uh, Night Marchers he's put in the discard so far, maybe goes uh, aggressive towards that Kartana. I would love to be able to see that at some point. For now, though, just seeing the cheap knockout apply a little bit of pressure, he's not quite there yet, but still having that Kartana sitting there, not really making too much of a difference. Keep in mind, with strong energy, you cannot attach that to a Pokemon other than a Fighting, so we are more likely than not not going to see an awkward scenario where Jimmy starts loading up, or John starts loading up energy on a Kartana. Nothing weird like that. So it's just a little bit of a liability right now. Prism energy in the grip. And we've got a scoop. It up. The writing's on the wall. Uh, John just couldn't quite get to those damage modifiers uh, that he needed. He placed three copies of Muscle Band, which would have put the Hitmonchan's attack just over the edge to be right. able to start taking those one-hit knockouts on the Pumpkaboo. Couldn't find it. Really uh, didn't find any draw supporters either, and Jimmy finds himself skating to uh, a game one win. Yeah, and I think not finding those draw supporters, that made the biggest difference for John's side because... He had that VS Seeker sitting in his hand. It's just there wasn't really much of anything good to VS Seeker for at the time. Yeah, and expanded. That's a that's a rare occurrence. That, yeah. that you find yourself stuck with VS Seekers in hand <laughs> with nothing to actually do with them. Uh, John really hoping to get the same type of setup. Maybe not have the Kartana GX on bench, but you know, a couple Wobbuffets, a Hitmonchan with a strong energy. The Ancy was on board, even with a Muscle Band. John would have been able to creep back into the game a little bit by just taking knockouts. Um, so wasn't completely far off of painting the full picture for himself with his Hitmonchan hit and run deck, but just fell a little shy. And uh, the onus is uh, is back on on Jimmy to win game two. This is this is a fast matchup. There we're gonna have time for three games here. Oh yeah, and that's honestly a little exciting just from our point of view to be able to see upwards of three games completed. Now, granted. Depending on how this next game goes, we might just see two relatively fast games. But in the expanded format, especially in actually really just any format with best two out of three, 50 minutes, getting the mat games done makes such a big difference, being able to have that ability. And that's what Night March can do. Absolutely. You mentioned it yesterday that... Um being able to complete games and get full wins as opposed to draws is incredibly important in uh, these types of uh, regional tournaments. So we just see a Prism Energy uh, go on to the Hitmonchan. Pumpkaboo, great starter for Jimmy. Um, going to be able to hit uh, the Hitmonchan for weakness, which is great. Uh, so, you know, Dimension Mallet DC and a Battle Compressor, and <laughs> Jimmy finds himself with a knockout on his turn one. We have that early committing of the Prism Energy to the active Hitmonchan, even if there is a slight risk of the Hitmonchan getting knocked out. I guess that makes sense in a lot of ways, and it's okay, but we see the hard retreat there. Hard retreat, so we've got that strong energy to follow up next turn, assuming that there isn't some weird knockout shenanigan. John does have a pretty good hand. Strong energy uh, can actually use Karina to grab uh, Deancey, an adventurer's bag, uh, grab a, a couple muscle bands if necessary, and um, really get off to taking knockouts his, uh, uh, himself. Jimmy, though... Going to see what he can cobble together for his turn one going yeah. through the paces here. And it's a little harder because of Wobbuffet shutting off the abilities of non-psychic Pokemon. But Jay's going to go ahead and go through here. He has options. I mean, he's sitting on a Battle Compressor VS Seeker combo. That's one of the reasons why VS Seeker is normally not a dead card in Expanded, because you can Battle Compressor for any supporter card that you would need, get that back with via seeker from the discard pile and just use it and with that i think we see the guzma going on the discard so that's a scary thought lampant lampant guzma uh i wonder if uh jimmy finds him himself a way to get uh to get this knockout and whether he, he whether is sitting on the computer search, so he's got a chance to be able to get the turn one knockout. Oh, oh, he's got Electro the Electro Power, power. power is coming into play. Oh here. man, it's not just a burn right there. He's just he's using it and he's getting that damage. So, so Shaman for five with the computer search in hand. Yeah. So if he wants the knockout, he has the knockout. Trainer's mail. Just how is he going to do it? And we've There's got battle, battle compressor, compressor off the trainer's mail. Jimmy's moving at the speed of sound right now. That is. Okay, and go, go. let's see what we have. So he's going to go ahead and get the... He's got a couple discards here. 
couple choices in terms of what he wants to get. Lampin, out Lampin, there. Pump Kaboo, just upping that Night March damage output. Yes, yeah, so we've got about. Oh, and nice, and we've got a little marker here, courtesy of either the judge or Jimmy. Maybe even both. Maybe a little collab going on of how many Night Marchers are in the discard pile. Thank you, Drew Gorodsky, our table judge. So, we've got a bit of overkill going on, though. Yeah. Ultra Ball, discarding Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball. Let's see. Oh, and oh, we've got and the we're Marsh let loose. too. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like it looks like Jimmy did not have the uh, the computer search that last card. I believe was a uh, Silent Lab. Nice. Um, so not too great in this scenario, but uh, being able to Guzma up, draw five off of Shaman as well as Let Loose, effectively uh, the Judge supporter card, using it as a Pokemon ability. And four cards for Jimmy Joltik, Trainer's Mail. Didn't see the other two. And I think order that's pad? another, is that another battle compressor or an order pad? And the Silent, Silent Lab, Lab is back. Yeah, All right. nice. So that's basically about one of the best combos he could have pulled off turn one. Adventurer's Bag, maybe Floatstone Muscle Band. Yep, there's our Floatstone. And we got an end. So at least John has some stuff to do this game. And even for such a devastating turn one like that, knocking out his main attacker, getting to suffer a silent lab, it's just all in all pretty tough for John in this situation, but all he needs to be able to maintain momentum is an energy and a Hitmonchan. Yep. Uh, cutting each other's deck, we have an end. Jimmy grabbing five. John grabbing a six. And we've got... An ultra, an ultra ball. ball. All right, so John isn't completely ice cold. He has the opportunity to get a hit. He has a strong energy as well. Um, so interested to see what John elects to go for here. Definitely needs to grab something. Hitmonchan, strong energy. And he, he was about to get one Hitmonchan, but got the other. I don't know why, but at any rate, we've got a Hitmonchan. Maybe <laughs> accidentally pulled up the Hitmonlee. Maybe so. Yeah, the they, I think they have similar close. arts, yeah. Hit and run. That's an that's an easy knockout on a Joltik. Dealing a cool 100 damage after weakness is calculated in. Oh, yeah. Our shadow promotion here. Does Jimmy have another Guzma DCE? I think he might. Versus Seeker. Guzma. Yep. That, that, that signifies there's definitely a DCE oh, in there. Oh, yeah. John has to be he's like, I just end this guy. Come on. Yeah, although that's the great thing about what Night March does is it has lots of outs. It has lots of ways to get what it needs. It is probably the number one deck in terms of synergy with Battle Compressors, so it always has a reason to play it. But in particular, it always has a reason to run four copies so that it can have that consistency like we saw two turns ago from Jimmy being able to get that Guzma out. Now he's just going to be able to reuse it. I think John uh, using Nest Ball here, maybe select an attacker. I know John also has uh, teammates in hand, which will be a good supporter for him this turn to be able to maintain or kind of keep keep up with what Jimmy's got going on and at least take a knockout for himself. Nice. So heavy thought. Heavy thought, and it's a justified one because, again, we've got another one of those potentially game-deciding decisions here. Deancey getting pulled up there. Teammates coming down. Yes, confirmed. Silent Lab is in play, though. So while he has that Oren Guru sitting in his hand, it's not going to do a whole lot of good without a counter stadium in play. Um, so John hit, uh, hit and run last turn, right? Could John... Strong energy... Strong energy a Hitmonlee and hit the Shaman on bench? That's a possibility getting a little bit of damage on the board. I like having the Wobbuffet active again just so that he can shut off the abilities of Jimmy to apply that pressure. So yeah, it was a little unfortunate what happened the last turn for Jimmy to have all those cards, but by committing to the same game plan, he's going to say, hey, Jimmy, have all the exact same cards you did last time, only now it's less likely. Yep, and of course, uh, based on Jimmy's board right now, if he does want to take a knockout with that Pumpkaboo, has to find a Dimension Valley to put in play. <clears throat> John's two-card hand is a pretty decent one. 
Hitmonchan, and a Sycamore. That's right, we have the Marsh Shadow going up, and I think we saw the Floodstone too, so... Not sure if that is signifying either an aggressive third Guzma, or and we see the Floodstone going down, so it looks like Jamie's just going to go ahead and go for the best possible odds of scoring a knockout. And with an end of four, I don't really see it but i mean we've seen less likely things happen on stream this weekend yeah it's been uh, it's it's been wild the things that have rolled off the top of the deck playing out the electro power just to thin the deck floatstone choice band just getting all this stuff down to minimize the the chances of drawing them uh on this uh not fully powered end we'll say for six just for four mm -hmm. on jimmy's side of the board and uh four cards to john as well battle compressor and we've got Battle Compressor for some additional discards here. More deck thin. He's well within range of knocking out just about everything in John's deck. And important thing to note, we had talked before the match a little bit about the possibility of Shuckle GX becoming relevant. But with four non-Shuckle Pokemon in play, that's less likely to pop up in this game. We might see it as a viable Pokemon to come up after that Silent Lab is discarded after the dowsing machines eventually baited, but here it's just gonna be knockout to knockout. Assuming Jimmy can get the knockout this turn. Correct, absolutely. Come on, Jimmy, flash us those three cards so we can see what you what you got going on there. Adjust a pass. That's what That's we got going on. Great news for uh, for John, and especially because Jimmy does have an EX Pokemon on the bench which is great for John. It gives him the opportunity to close out a little bit faster than Jimmy could. So this is a key turn for, for John. Going to have to definitely take a knockout. Muscle Band is the great first step. Nest Ball, what do we find in here? He's eyeing that Hitmonchan again, maybe eyeing something else. Yep, and we've got that backup Hitmonchan in case something happens to the one which John is going ham on right now. Absolutely. That uh, Marshadow Let Loose is not long for this world. Hit and run back into Wob. And, and John's strategy knockout. coming together in game two. I'm, I'm kind of crossing my fingers for game three here, John. I'd love to see this slugfest continue. Yeah, same thing. I mean, we've had a lot of interesting interactions go on. We've had some wild plays pulled off by both players. I want to see that again. I want to see some of the more unlikely things happen pop up too where it looks like right now jimmy's setup is just kind of stuttered and so he's trying to get back from that and close the game out but he's behind now so it's a little easier said than done kind of under uh the stress of his own silent lab jimmy can't use that other shaman that he has and hit tucked away in his deck couldn't like rescue stretcher for for the marsh shadow to maybe let loose if that became an opportunity again so jimmy got to piece this together maybe dce dimension valley coming now off the versus seeker teammates we've got that rescue stretcher from jimmy we'll see what he's going to go ahead and get with the silent lab in play right now it's a little hard but he would need the counter stadium like you were talking about with that so it doesn't look like it's his train of thought just get an attacker into play but we've got the Dimension Valley, so no longer an issue. And we've got momentum going back in Jimmy's side here. Not necessarily his favor, because he's got a GX Pokemon hanging out there saying, hey, knock me out, John. But at the same time, it's looking a little bit better. Yeah, that, that was a crucial turn for Jimmy, just to keep pace in the game. I think if he misses another knockout there, um, obviously the, the percentage chance of winning in Game 2 goes uh, from less than favorable to ridiculously unfavorable uh, just based on the fact that he has an EX on the board and John clearly has another knockout already lined up with those uh, strong energy with the muscle band. So uh, versus Seeker for teammates for John, he's going to get two cards that he wants and he's going to put them directly into his hand. Yep, so not having to show them, but I'm sure that because of how impactful they're probably going to be, we will be seeing them on the board reasonably soon. Now at this point, seeing the way that the matchup is dealing out i think that this is pretty reminiscent to how a night march mirror would almost go where the player who's the first one to put one of those 
GX or EX Pokemon into play is the first to become really vulnerable, and usually it's that player who might lose. You know what John's setting up here? He just teammates for that trend of punishments. He's setting up yeah. for the Hitmonlee play on that Shaman to yep. end the game. So that way he's got he grabbed Versus Seeker Shrine and and just feeding Jimmy a Wobbuffet. And, um, and that was the most unenthusiastic draw of a card I think I've seen in a while. So heads on order like, pad for Jimmy. So that's that's a little bit of hope there, being able to get that item card, get it into his hand, and keep the momentum going. But you're right with that Hitmon Lee just staring down the Shaman. It's tough to say if he can really manage a comeback here. Order pad gonna help maybe Dimension Valley to bump the Shrine before it gets that second tick in. That 90 damage being that crucial uh crucial number shaman with 110 hp and giving up two prizes order pad grabbed a versus seeker versus seeker i believe grabbed uh teammates right looks like we've got to be a seeker N, for N. N. okay shuffle up john going to two jimmy going to three a uh, good read by jimmy there seeing that john did teammates for two cards only played one thing down out of his hand and then took the knockout so. and there's a double so a little bit more pressure there but john doesn't need a whole lot in order to close this game out an end to three finds the double colorless energy jimmy taking the knockout oh and he has Guzma. the guzma and they go straight to game three. So Guzma obviously targeting down the Shaman, the Shaman EAs. Yeah. Uh, even though Shaman does have resistance to fighting, uh, all those damage modifiers with the two strong energy DNC muscle band, more than enough to get over that 110 HP hump. Take that knockout, last two prizes. We've got a game three. That's right, and we got a little bit more excitement going on. I want to see that Shuckle GX actually become relevant at some point. It's a great card in... At least theoretically, it can be great in this matchup too. But Silent Lab's just too good, it, and you get to reuse Silent Lab potentially too with that dowsing machine. Absolutely. Uh, interesting to note that the players that went first won the game, and sometimes uh, in matches like this, it's to your advantage to go second so you can take the first knockout and initiate that prize exchange. So uh, a little bit something uh, uncommon that you might not have expected for a matchup of this this type yeah and actually you would see that in night march mirror matches you still see it in night march mirror matches where the player who wins the coin flip is usually going to opt second but that really depends on a lot of things it depends on knowing your opponent is using night march for instance and so if we were to go ahead and pretend that this were like a pseudo like a kind of night march mirror in some ways you wouldn't quite have to assume that but you'd have to assume that there aren't cards that hurt your ability to deal with that like assuming your opponent does not run focus sash so Correct. i think both of these players they they're stuck on just having to go with their normal defaults which is playing first um looks like we are back down to the action jimmy is on the button here leading a joltic facing down a hitmon chan and if that joltic stays in the active and john eng has any energy besides his beast energy uh that's an easy knockout for a turn one for john all right and we've got Jimmy here with the battle compressor early on, so lots of things he can start comboing, set himself up. Going through the motions for that early game Night March, and because the Hitmonchan is active, we can see abilities from Jimmy, meaning that this can be one of those longer turns. You know, I overheard somebody saying the other day that an expanded the first turn can be pretty lengthy, and that's because people have a lot of options. They have great item cards like Battle Compressor. They have cards like Shaman and Tapu Lele, EX and GX to draw and search more cards. There are a lot of decisions to make, lots of decisions. Absolutely. Again, um, kind of the, the bane in this matchup is benching an EX Pokemon. Um, John has two, uh, EX or GX. John has two, the Kartana GX and the Shuckle GX. And uh, Jimmy playing uh, Marshadow GX to hit those Pika Roms, uh, a Tapu Lele GX, and two Shaman EX. If I'm either of these players, that is a last resort to bench one of those because I'm stuck. If I can avoid it, I'm doing so at all costs. Right. But what we are not avoiding right here is getting a little bit of energy on that Pump Kaboo, having it as a viable attacker early on, say, hey, John, play one of your things to discard this. I don't mind. I don't care. I'll just go ahead and get it back. 
and maybe even bait that GX Cartana to go into play to give Jimmy another opening. Uh, Jimmy using Ultra Ball, taking inventory of his deck here. Uh, John, an ideal turn for him. So the, the reason that he puts the DCE on the Pump Kubu on the bench is it's saying, okay, you either Guzma up and try and knock out this Pump Kubu with the DCE to eliminate my energy, or I just feed you this easy knockout Joltik, really making uh, John have to make a decision. Ideally, though, for John, he finds his one copy of Enhanced Hammer, takes a knockout on the Joltik, knocks the DCE off, and then Cartana GX isn't on the bench. Jimmy has no energy in play, and John can go on with his day. Well, speaking of going on with our day, we still have that turn one here for Night March going on, getting those discards. And we've gone to we've gone back and forth with this before in terms of the ideal split of the Pokemon you need to discard for a Night March, where obviously Lampin is your number one choice to discard as a target. But then past that point, it gets a little murkier what the best split of discarding say Pumpkaboos and Joltix can be and what the best time to discard them is and because Jimmy is less reliant on Dimension Valley you see that emphasis for Pumpkaboo. Trainer's Mail coming down, Electro Power gonna go to the grip for Jimmy Pendarvis. Let's see, Hoarder Pad just got everything going on. Is Are we gonna get a heads here? No, nope, uh, Tails. Hoarder Pad not coming through on this button here. Second Electro Power coming down, Pumpkaboo instruct for three using that ability while he has access to it before that wob effect comes into play. We see two Ultra Balls Ooh. and a Parallel City. Yeah, that's right. Going down for the Shaman to keep that accelerated turn one just even faster. Thinning out the deck, getting the cards that he needs. That's one of the other special advantages of playing side mar or Night March is that you are able to get to that point where you really don't have a whole lot of cards left and just say Night March over and over again. That's a great point. And my concern here is uh, Shaman is such a, a, a squishy two prizer. Um, wonder if there's any consideration there to maybe grab if it was in the deck the Tapu Lele GX because it is a little bit bulkier while sitting on the bench. Uh, just grab yourself a supporter for next turn and go from there. Uh, Jimmy elects to see most cards possible. Let's get as much of this trash out of this deck as I can. That way, as you mentioned, I can just keep announcing Night March once I start. Yeah, and one interesting decision here that we had briefly discussed was playing of the Electro Power just to thin out. That's going to take away a couple of the other options we might have seen otherwise, like, su like surprise knockouts that aren't as Night March discard intensive. But at the same time, it let, it basically gets him there the same way, one way or the other, where he gets his Pokemon, he has ways to get his Pokemon back, and he can get up to those big damage numbers without being too overcommitted. Shrine of, uh, Shrine of Punishment coming down for John Eng. Something I'd like to note for Jimmy Pendarvis, just had a pretty uh, involved turn, shuffling a lot. I don't know how he's not wearing wrist braces. Got to have carpal tunnel by this point, doing that for doing that for two straight days. Uh, I don't know, man. When you play Pokemon as much as Jimmy or Pokemon as much as just about most of the people here at the tournament, you build some pretty strong wrist muscles. I guess you have to. Karina coming down. Hitmonchan. Adventurer's Bag. Enhanced Hammer. Love it. Love that choice. He's got the Prism Energy in hand. He's got the Knockout. He's going to be able to pivot to Wobbuffet. <coughs> Karina is such a strong card. Get yourself an item. Get yourself a fighting Pokemon. That's what it's all about. Enhanced Hammer. Hitmonchan coming down. Strong energy, question mark. Question mark because he's not sure if he wants to leave it open. And I see him flirting with attaching that prism just like you said. Ultimately, that's what he decides to go. Mm. No, it doesn't. He he was, he was doing a great... <laughs> and it looks like we had almost a little bit of hesitation there, like a second or third guess. But, yep, strong going down. Gives him a little bit of that damage option for later on. So, really, he... I, uh, getting into his train of thought here, he was probably considering just the odds of saving that energy versus and how he could lose it, where he could indirectly lose it by it getting end away, or he could directly lose it by it getting Guzma knocked out. So he probably figured out that the odds of the N are more likely than the Guzma knockout. Uh, putting the strong energy down also represents, as we saw game one, you know, he needs to get to... Uh <coughs> Uh, to get to 90 minus the 20 to take the knockout there, right? So strong energy represents, you know, another strong energy attachment to get over that hump if he finds Deancey, uh, or strong energy muscle band to get over that hump to be able to take that knockout. So uh, I like the, the playing down of the strong energy there. 
uh, teammates gonna give John the selection maybe adventures bag and an energy to get floatstone muscle band strong tons of options here uh, I think he grabbed Hitmonchan I think it it's tough to say because again similar arts but it looks like that's Hitmon Lee Oh, and he's going for it. He's going for that clean knockout, knockout. on the yeah. Shaman. And because it's the bench, it does not Love resist. Love it. That Shrine only needing to be in uh, uh, two passing of the turns to put 20 damage on Shaman. And I said that was a liability, and it's come to fruition here. John now down to three prizes, Jimmy having just taken one. And now John's sitting with a board, no GXs, and uh, I believe has another teammates in hand. Tons of real estate to keep up with this uh, prize exchange. Yeah, but I don't see an Oranguru in place. So with, uh, and this is a big if, but uh, if Jimmy is able to hit heads here on that order pad, then, well, can't hit uh, can't hit heads if it falls off the table. You got to re-roll. I think my man is trying to flip the <laughs> dice into the camera. I think that's, that's right. I think that's what he's trying to do. He first wanted to flip it in the camera. Now he flips it off the camera. But we do have a heads, and so that gives Jimmy some additional options here to be able to get some of the cards that he needs. I think an N would be really optimal at this point. He's looking for a knockout, but he also does not want to have an immediate response from John. Field Blower is what is found off of that order pad. Might as well get rid of the shrine. Low impact. It's already done its job. Uh, but getting rid of the floatstone, the more uh, pivotal uh, piece of the puzzle. He's already had the VS Seeker before the order pad. So he goes ahead and just says, hey, I'm going to go ahead and end. And maybe we can get some insult added to injury, some additional disruption here. So Jimmy down to five, John down to three. And it's all pressure on John to have the one card that he really needs to keep up pace which computer is search yeah so and good. what better card to keep up pace than computer search could easily find john uh sycamore something of that nature uh not what jimmy's going to want to see once he attacks in and passes the turn yeah um that's an easy promote for john's side joltik's going to be in the active you you know you play the odds here hitmonchan's going to find an energy and I like what Jimmy's the doing here, retreat. the hard retreat of a double colorless energy just to make himself less vulnerable to a knockout. Uh, now John has to step back and says, what pieces of the puzzle do I need for this? He needs strong energy, muscle band, and Deancey to be able to take the knockout here uh, in one fell swoop. One misstep, and then Jimmy gets himself right back in this game, despite giving up that two-prize Shaman EX. Right, and... In order to be able to combo this in just the right way, we're going to need probably three damage modifiers from John because of that resistance on the pump kaboo. We would need a strong energy, we would need a muscle band, and we need a Deancey Prism Star. Between the three of those, that would be plus 60 damage for a little bit more than enough to knock out that pump kaboo. But with computer search, anything's possible. And we see that pro play order of operations there by John immediately putting that discarded beast energy into the loss zone because it's a prism star. To the surprise of no one, John pulls uh, Professor Sycamore to the front. Last card in hand is a Shrine of Punishment. I can guarantee that's going to come down and bump yep. that Dimension Valley. And then we're going to have a clean Sycamore for seven. Yeah, and so John has pressure to hit several cards all at once. He has Muscle Band, Ultra muscle Ball, band Prism Energy. Prism Energy, so not bad, but not quite enough. Needed to find that strong. Uh, nest ball. It's Deancey time. Maybe via Seeker time. Via Seeker sprouted legs and became a Pokemon. John giving a hard consideration here what to get with that Nest oh, Ball. Oh, I like the Orin Guru because the Deancey isn't making as much of a difference right now without the strong, so... I'm not sure if John's trying to dig a little... Oh, and he's because of he's got the Ultra Ball, he can fill out all of his hand until he has one card left so he's got that muscle band. He's got muscle band draw and struck Inst for one it looks like I, I like it and struck for one try and hit the strong off the top uh, oh not quite just a prism so guzma guzma in hand for next turn as well um and i believe the other card is a is it a sycamore yeah yeah it looks like a sycamore and a guzma Sycamore and, and regardless, going to be able to rinse that hand oh, or yeah. take a big knockout uh, if desired. Wobbuffet finds itself back in the active. Uh, a little uh, a little cushion, a little protection from uh, that Wobbuffet not holding a floatstone. 
with that Guzma to be able to get Hitmonchan back in the active and keep swinging. And the really fascinating play about Jimmy's earlier decision to hard retreat that Joltik is while it might have been the optimal play in order to protect that Joltik, and it ultimately resulted in no knockout happening this turn, Jimmy has to work a little bit harder to have his own response here because the Dimension Valley is gone. So he needs to either attach again to something, you know, whether that's a Guzma with a Guzma and a double, whether it's a, another double to the Pumpkaboo or a Dowsing Machine for the Dimension Valley. The point is, because he did that, it's requiring him to get another card, to have another card. And there is that Guzma, so that's one of the pieces to whatever he might need if he's holding on to the double. Yep. Re there we go. Recall correctly that uh, a spec in Jimmy's deck is Dowsing Machine, not the normal proxy computer searches we've been seeing. Um, Guzma and N in hand off the top is a nest ball. And that and that is just another thing is that's you might have seen that fairy energy. It's that's what Kirk was talking about. That's the proxy for the dowsing machine. Uh, of course, using that to pull up Guzma, take the knockout on Hitmonchan. And now Diancy's in the active. Shuffling up here, looking to get an instruct for two for one maybe john uh with a real decision here because needs the knockout to stay ahead of the prize trade uh guzma on pumpkaboo needs an energy and does not fans it. get it or does he i i see the n in his hand and we've got the blood well, stuff, so already, it isn't that bad well already guzma for turn yeah so he cannot play a supporter card and he's Ooh, just Ooh, that's rough. That's very yep. rough. That's a that's a very unfortunate turn for John. Couldn't find the and energy. And has the escape rope right on cue. Uh, do you feed the Orangaroo? That's your only draw. Do you feed the attacker? Do you feed your damage modifier? I, I think the reason why he's feeding the Orangaroo is because well, he's got a response to it. He's got the N. He's got the Cynthia, so he can take it one of two different ways here. Yeah, leaving yourself with a free retreater in that buzz wool is nice. Uh, versus Seeker off the top. Wouldn't be shocked to see a teammates here to take a knockout, but the price trade has swung back in Jimmy's favor with that crucial hard retreat from the Joltik into the Pumpkaboo, saying, John, here's an end. Do you have it? John missed it. And now Jimmy was able to leverage that and put himself in a favorable position to close out this game, as I mentioned, despite giving up those two prizes with Shaman EX. And what I'm interested to see here is if John's going to go for some Hail Mary play right now with an N, or if he's going to do something else. Seeing the teammates, though, he decides to go for the absolute safest play he can, apply some pressure, get out another attacker, thinking, okay, the best option for me is to go ahead and keep up the game plan that I've had all match, keep on getting knockouts, and keep on forcing Jimmy Pendarvis to have all the right cards to pull off whatever disruption combo he needs, especially... Guzma KOs. So John already behind the prize trade here, uh, eyeing up an energy and perhaps um, Kartana uh, to be able to take a knockout and slice off the other energy and, you know, say, all right, Jimmy, you only got a couple cards left. Did you manage to find another DCE to keep your attacks going? I think the Kartana GX would be a little premature at this point just because of what we've been talking about all match with those exchanges of the GX Pokemon making such a big difference. Perhaps, and it, he might not be able to play it at the ideal time just because of the amount of pressure that's on him right now, but the pos perhaps ideal time would be to play it when he has only one prize, when Jimmy only has one prize card left and it's irrelevant. So getting that discard and at the same time threatening a prize. So we've got this knockout here, both players tied up right now. So again, it volleys back to Jimmy to make sure that he has everything that he needs to respond correctly. Uh, Hitmonchan off the prizes, and Cynthia and John we know also has the N here. So Ooh. teammates, gonna make this a little bit easier to find the pieces you need when you get to look in your deck and grab any two cards. It uh, it doesn't become a stretch or a surprise that Jimmy will be able to take another knockout here. And we've got the double double Ooh. on Pumpkaboo right now, so that's a huge investment. But we don't have that same type of vulnerability the deck would have otherwise if, one, if we had doubles and different attachments so he's like you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and load it all up on my pokemon and just see where we go from here order pad heads three cards left i think in jimmy's deck gonna take a knockout oh with this pumpkaboo see a float so dce off the prize 
DCE, two prizes left, finds the DCE, so he's got it all here. John needs to consider ending and taking a knockout. And Jimmy's deck is pretty much just DCEs now. I believe he's played a special charge this game, too. So Jimmy doing a great job leaving himself with the resources he'll need to close out this game. Yeah, that's been some solid deck thin throughout the entire series, actually. But especially this third game, it's making the most obvious difference to everybody. But John's going to have to play that end down. And because he does not run Silent Lab or any way to shut off that Orin Guru except Wobbuffet. Now, that can be... a critical point in this game where if he has some way to get out Wobbuffet despite all these knockouts then he might be able to shut off the Instruct. And you've got the Kartana, Kartana and, and I, via Seeker, right? Yeah, versus Seeker was the other card. Retreat. I think with one prize left, I, I'm pretty sure you just have to... I was going to say uh, you know, there's no value in slicing off there. What would Jimmy get off the top? Oh, Structure for one, and he's got Shaman for four, and it looks like that's all but enough. And there's a there double. It yep. There it is. There it is. Uh, wow. Jimmy playing that uh, very well and is what a very back and forth uh, matchup. Jimmy, key turn, as you mentioned, the hard retreat of the Joltik. Promote the Punkaboo, play N, say, hey, I know you're going to need two damage, mo or excuse me, three damage modifiers to be able to take a knockout with your only attacker on board, which is that Hitmonchan. Yeah, and I think that might have been one of the best plays in the whole series was that decision to hard retreat the Joltik. Now, normally I think most players would be a little anxious about doing something like that because of the investment involved with it, but Jimmy knows his own deck well enough. I mean, he's been around long enough, and this deck has been around long enough with him, too, to the point where he's like, you know what, let's just go ahead and get that out of the active position get my hit but not get hit back and that was the moment where he changed the tide in that third game very interesting decision tree on john's end as well to be fair the shaman was just kind of stuck on the bench he could have slow rolled that hitmon lee knockout maybe a little bit longer so that end wouldn't have been as devastating that early in the game uh, because once that end hit those three cards he did find computer search but he just couldn't really get the action going after that right well, at this point, it looks like in a little bit, we will have a post-game match interview with Jimmy Pendarvis. So, see you in a bit. Hello everyone, welcome back to the 2019 Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championship here in Toronto. I'm here with our match winner, Jimmy Pendarvis. Maybe we can go ahead and take things a little bit differently to keep things fresh as far as the interviewing goes. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about your general process for the Hitmonchan matchup when you're using Night March? Yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of the time in those single prize matchups, it's just Joltik hitting Joltik or Joltik hitting Vespaquin and those guys being the active Pokemon. But the thing about John's uh, Hitmonchan deck is he puts Wobbuffet active, which makes it a lot tougher. And then additionally, uh, in, in, uh, on top of making my knockouts harder, he saves his own Pokemon. So the Hitmonchan's on the bench every turn, and it's just knockout, knockout, knockout. 
Uh, so it's really hard for me to chase those, but I have to when he puts strong energies on them. Uh, otherwise, I'm always going to be behind. We saw him on Lee come down. That was a big play. I wasn't too surprised by that, though. Uh, I knew it was in his deck, and I knew I was going to have to Dazzling for Parallel at one point if I wanted to stop that. That was my plan eventually, but I just couldn't do it early. Uh, but that play, despite giving him a lead, uh, cost him on board, and I think it was a mistake, honestly. Yeah, so do you feel like it mirrors in any way the Night March Mirror matchup in some ways, or do you think it's radically different? I think it mirrors it 100%. You know, there's a couple things you can do. Defensive stuff like Field Blower and Silent Lab, uh, Guzman N are going to be the key cards. Uh, but other than that, it's just trying to take a knockout every turn. Right, so uh, you were telling me off stream a little while ago that you're hoping that you can maybe ID your next two rounds to get <laughs> the top cut. Yeah, Collinsville, I thought there was a chance I could do that, and it also gave me some better matchups throughout the tournament. So in round 14, I ID'd, and then around 15, I had to play, and I lost to a good matchup, so that was unfortunate. Uh, and I hope I can just get in with two IDs to try to get my fourth win. Yeah, and you're hoping you can maybe get the exact perfect bracket situation to avoid <laughs> Trevenant. Yeah, I mean, not playing against Trevenant would be awesome. I played versus Trevenant yesterday on stream, got destroyed. Uh, I know it's bad, but I know I can win it too, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Cool. Uh, are there any other decks you're a little worried about, or really just Trev? It's all Trev and Pyro up there. I beat a Pyro yeah. earlier today, so that was sweet. Uh, but I wouldn't count on doing that again, and I hope I don't have to. Cool. Well, before I let you go, do you have any shout-outs for anyone? Yeah, shout-out to DDG. I love them. And shout-out to 60 Cards. I write for them now. Nice. Well, good luck, Jimmy. And with that, we'll send back to you.